A lot of people ask me, what's the best macronutrient ratio for fat loss? And I can see why this is such a confusing question because a lot of popular diets advocate eating in a certain ratio and say that one is better for fat loss than another. For example, the zone diet advocates eating in a 40-30-30 split, where 40% of your calories come from carbs, 30% come from protein, and 30% come from fat. Now, this is in contrast to eating for performance, which says that you should get 40% of your calories from carbs, 40% from protein, and 20% from fat. To make things even more confusing, the dietary guidelines for Americans say that you should get 40 to 65% of your calories from carbs, 10 to 35% from protein, and 20 to 35% as fat. And even MyFitnessPal forces people to adjust their macronutrient split in a range of a 5% increment, unless you, of course, use the premium. So what is the best macronutrient range for fat loss? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Despite what you've been told, there is no one single macronutrient ratio that's best for everyone. And if you try to plan your diet by using these ratios, things can get wonky real fast because calories are thrown into the equation. And that really messes things up. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say a 160 pound woman who's very sedentary wants to lose weight. And to do this, let's say she needs 1300 calories. If you went with a 40-30-30 ratio, where 40% of calories were coming from carbs, 30% from protein, and 30% from fat, she'd end up eating just 98 grams of protein, 130 grams of carbs, and 43 grams of fat. Now, let's say the same woman is extremely active, working both a high-paced job and doing intense workouts every day. With this level of lifestyle and exercise activity, let's say she can eat 2,300 calories and still lose weight. If she went with that same 40-30-30 split, she'd now be eating 173 grams of protein, 230 grams of carbs, and 77 grams of fat. Now that's a huge difference that really creates a problem when it comes to protein because each person is going to need an optimal amount based on their body size and goal. 98 grams of protein isn't enough for a 160 pound woman on a fat loss goal. To maintain muscle and stay full on that low number of calories she's eating, she'll need closer to 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound, which amounts to somewhere between about 130 grams and 160 grams of protein. From this, you can also see that 173 grams of protein is somewhat overkill for this person, which doesn't necessarily hurt anything, but it does take away from some additional carbs that might otherwise be used for fueling workouts. When going by these ratios, protein doesn't even fall within the 130 to 160 gram optimal range in either case. So clearly you can see when it comes to determining the optimal amount of protein, carbs, and fat you should be eating, using macronutrient ratios or fixed percentages simply doesn't work. Instead of relying on fixed ratios and percentages, you should first figure out how many calories you need to eat to lose weight and from there figure out your protein needs. One popular way of establishing the calories you need to lose weight is by multiplying your body weight times 12. Now, this can underestimate calories, especially for people who are more active. So an even better way would be to use an online total daily energy expenditure calculator to establish maintenance calories first, and then reduce this by 15 or 20%, since this would figure activity level into your needs. After that, to find your protein, multiply your body weight by a factor of 0.8 to 1, Go on the lower side if you have more than around 20 to 25 pounds to lose, or the upper end if you have less. After you figure out your protein, subtract these from your remaining calories and then divide the rest up between carbs and fat. You might choose to get just 20% of your total calories from fat if you love carbs, are extremely active, and have no problem controlling blood sugar. And you might choose to get 30 or even 40% of your calories from fat if you're more sedentary and struggle with high blood sugar. The important thing to remember when it comes to determining how many carbs and fats you should eat is that they're both primary sources of energy and they're pretty much interchangeable. Choosing whether to go slightly higher in carbs or fat is going to depend mostly on personal preference, but you can also factor in whether you're an athlete or whether maybe you're a type 2 diabetic and you're very concerned about your blood sugar. But contrary to popular belief, going lower in carbohydrates isn't necessarily going to help you with fat loss unless somehow that causes you to eat less. For example, if you just find the diet more satisfying. All that being said, if you don't want to calculate the macros yourself and do all that math, you might just have Avatar Nutrition do it for you. We set your macros every week and we do that using science. For example, we consider a lot more factors than what we've talked about this video. 
We also do the adjustments for you so you don't have to worry about that. And finally, our tracker allows you to substitute carbs and fats at will to keep you on track. So to come full circle here, is there a best macronutrient range that's gonna work for everybody across the board? And the answer is no. There's no magic here. Everybody needs a different amount of protein, carbs, and fat, and you really wanna do this by the gram. You don't wanna to try to set these using fixed ratios or percentages.